right, we're ready. Good evening. And welcome to another lecture given by Meridian Soul, the school of the highest learning. First of all, this is a school and not a church, and neither are we associated with any religious organization, Jehovah's Witnesses, or any other denominations you have caught in the world today. This school was founded in the year in, of 1931 as a result of a divine vision and revelation direct from Yahweh, given to Dr. Henry C. Kinley in the year 1931. The chart that you see pictorially illustrated before you are the results of that divine vision and revelation. I will be explaining the name you see here. Yahweh is the true and correct original Hebrew, uh, original name of our heavenly father, which was once laid down in the scriptures. We have Yahweh symbolized as a cloud on this chart because Yahweh symbolized himself as a cloud in many passages of the Bible. We have the cloud extending all around the edge of the chart so that everything on the chart is within the cloud, just as everything that exists, exists within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. In this pure spirit state, Yahweh has no descriptive shape or form in which he is the ultimate source and substance, the limits and the bounds of everything that exists. Now, when your translators have come across the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, they have usually inserted the English title, Lord. Yahweh, now taking on a superincorporeal shape and form within himself, as the word of Son, is known as Elohim. Now, superincorporeal means without physical flesh and blood. And in this state, Yahweh Elohim can only be seen through divine visions and understood through divine revelations. As stated in Exodus 24, 9 and 10, then went up Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now remember, they saw Elohim in a divine vision and revelation. Now when your translators have come across the true and correct divine title for Yahweh in shape and form known as Elohim, they have usually inserted the English title, God. Yahweh Elohim, now manifested in a physical body as the savior of the world, is known as Yahshua, the Messiah. As stated in John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with Yahweh and the word was Yahweh. And in the 14th verse, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. When your translators have come across the true and correct name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, they have duly inserted false and erroneous names such as Jesus Christ. But remember, Yahweh in pure spirit as the Father, Yahweh taking on a superincorporeal shape and form within himself as the word of Son known as Elohim, and Yahweh Elohim manifested in a physical body as the savior of the world, known as Yahshua the Messiah. Yahweh in his two manifestations, but one spirit. As stated in 1 John 5 and 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Now, a minor investigation on your part will prove to you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that the name and title that we teach here are true and correct but that the names and titles that you have been taught in the world today are false and erroneous. For an example, look up the letter J. It is not and has never been in any part of the Hebrew language and did not come into existence into any language prior to the Middle Ages. Therefore, such names as Jehovah and Jesus are impossible renderings of the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father Yahweh and his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Our aims, the primary constitutional objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without a distinction of race, creed, nationality, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law a so-called law of nature and powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures 
comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern practical and occult sciences. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the dragon, the devil, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of times. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered to the sons of the children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is none other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua, the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new state. I will watch for his peace and our slogan to speak the truth. We have prayer by Dr. Miranda Gonzalez. The scripture lesson read by Dr. Vanessa Collins. The scripture lesson will be Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Good evening, class. <clears throat> Let us bow our heart and our mind for prayer this evening. Almost gracious Heavenly Father Yahweh, we are again thankful, grateful for your revealing unto us this divine vision and revelation and for allowing us another opportunity to gather together with the brethren to hear, share, and partake of this glorious gospel, this gospel that leads unto eternal life. Thankful for your, your mercy your grace, your long suffering during these long, these perilous times that you have told us of for continuously being that that guards, shields, and protects us from ourselves. We are thankful that you have showed us this mercy showed us this grace and we ask that as we gather together tonight that you silence and steal our heart and the mind and we pray for those who would have been on but could not be on for whatever reason we pray for our brethren everywhere we ask that you give us all the same peace during these times and that you give us tonight on an individual basis that that we need to make us be able to stand and withstand that that is already in us. Bring us to the knowledge of it. These and our blessings we ask in thy son's name, Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 I don't think Vanessa's on, so I'll be reading the scripture lesson. Hebrews 11th chapter. I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name versions of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, devised by the late A.B. Train of the Scripture Research Association Incorporated, Hebrews 11th chapter. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the ages were ordained by the word of Elohim, so that things which were not in evidence are now seen coming to pass. By faith, Abel offered unto Yahweh a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Yahweh testifying of his gift. And by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because Yahweh had translated him. But before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased Yahweh. Hmm. 
but without faith, it is impossible to please him. But he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by Yahweh of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should afterwards receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is Yahweh. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly. Wherefore, Yahweh is not ashamed to be called their Elohim, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that Yahweh was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshiped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months by his parents because they saw he was a promising child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of Yahweh than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of the Messiah greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians attempting to do were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the hostess Rahab perished not with them that were disobedient when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued, subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, 
stop the mouths of lions, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, wax valiant in fight, turn to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds, and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sown asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Yahweh having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. That was Hebrews 11th chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Good evening, class. My name is Carla Carter. I'll be the host slash moderator for tonight's session. Our first speaker will be from Meridian Souls. Um, Dr. Eugene Collins. Collins, if you can unmute yourself. I'd like to say good evening to everyone. Good evening. And I'm thankful to Yahweh to have a testimony of this great gift that he have poured out among the sons down in this day and age. Because we have to surely know and understand that it is Yahweh that has come unto us and given us an understanding of himself. Because prior to coming into this gospel, or prior to him coming in and revealing his name unto us, we did not have a clue about our Heavenly Father. Every only thing we could do was guess and imagine about what he was all about. We, we didn't, didn't know nothing for an assurance. So he had to come in and purify our hearts and minds and purge us from all the ignorance that we had come into in this world by the fall of Adam. See, because when Adam fell, he fell in his consciousness. Let's go back over there and let's go and get that in Genesis, the uh, seventh chapter, where Yahweh gave Adam the commandment. Genesis 2, Just, and, Genesis 2 and 12. And Yahweh Elohim took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to bless it and to keep it. And Yahweh Elohim commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Now Yahweh so, gave Adam this commandment. He said, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. This is after Yahweh had placed Adam in the Garden of Eden. Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, three. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt die the death. See, but in the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it. See, that was a commandment that Yahweh, that was the first commandment that Yahweh gave. And he gave it unto the man, Adam. Now prior to, at that time, Adam was of a pure conscience, a spiritual consciousness. He walked and talked with Yahweh daily right within himself. He didn't know nothing about flesh and blood, nothing physical or carnal. That wasn't in the man at that time. So Yahweh put the man in a deep sleep <laughs> and brought forth the woman Eve. Took the rib and the wound out of the man and brought forth the woman Eve. See, but Yahweh had gave this commandment before he brought forth the woman. Okay. Well, read on, uh, Shirley, for you with that. Okay. The um, 15th verse. And 
And Yahweh Elohim said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I Yahweh will make said a, it is not good for the man to be alone. See, I will make a help suitable for him. Read. And out of the ground, Yahweh Elohim formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them unto the man to see what he would call them. And whatsoever the man called every living creature, that was his name. See, and Yahweh and formed every beast of the field, excuse me, sir, and every, all the birds of heaven and brought them before the man. That's what it said. And whatever Adam called them, that's what that was their name. Now, that's what it say back here in Genesis. But that was Yahweh naming everything that he had created. So you read. 17th verse, and the man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the heavens and to all the beasts of the field. But for the man, there was not found a help suitable for him. Now, Yahweh, and excuse me, Yahweh created all the beasts of the field and all of that, see, but he said for the man, there was no help found suitable found for him, see, for Yahweh had not created, brought forth the woman, read. And Yahweh Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And he slept and he took and he took the rib and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which Yahweh Elohim had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. See, now and the, the rib that Yahweh taken from the man made he a woman and he brought her unto the man read and the man said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh see, she shall be up. called woman mm -hmm. the man said this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh she she shall be called woman read she shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. Okay. Therefore, read. therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Do you say, therefore that, shall a man leave his father and mother? Now, what, what did Adam know about a father and a mother back, back then when that was spoken? See, this is Yahweh speaking. Yahweh knew what his purpose was. See, now I say, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. See, at that time, it wasn't nobody but Adam and Eve. See, they didn't have no mother from a natural and physical standpoint, no father from a natural and physical standpoint. That father was Yahweh who created them. See, and see, and it says they were both naked. See, and they was in the garden. They walked and talked with Yahweh daily. Read, uh, sir. Go on down to the third uh, chapter. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. Now I say and the he, serpent, that serpent that Yahweh had created was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. Now this serpent that is talking about, see, before Yahweh created the earth, the serpent was already already uh, roaming around and out of darkness because he had been cast out of heaven before that happened. And he had no place of rest. See, he had nothing to oppose. He had nothing. He was just in out of darkness, roaming to and fro. See, but now when Adam, when Yahweh created the man Adam, and uh, brought forth the woman, and when Yahweh gave that commandment, see, then that serpent had some to oppose. See, because Yahweh made him a liar and a murderer from the beginning. So now he got something that he can oppose. So, and, and read. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Hath Elohim said, 
ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. See, and excuse me, sir. He tried to be smooth with it. See, he tried to make it sound like he was saying exactly what Yahweh Elohim had said unto the man. But he didn't. He put a twist in it. See, read that again. And he said unto the woman, Hath Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? See, now that's not what Yahweh told Adam. He told Adam that every tree of the garden he may freely eat, but of the one that was in the midst, don't touch, lest he die. Mm -hmm. See? So he made it sound similar, but it, it, it wasn't the same thing, see? He was lying unto the woman. See? And that tree, see, it was good to the eyes, you know, so she partook of it. See? And when she partook of it, she fell in her consciousness. We read on. We'll get to that. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. See, now she, she said exactly what Yahweh told him. See, the one that's in the midst, you shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. See, he couldn't even touch the fruit. Three. Fourth verse. And the serpent said unto the woman, no death will you die. See, no death will you die. See, tell me a lie. That same lie he been, he been dragging that tail all the way down through the Asian dispensations. See, just lying. That's what Yahweh made him, a liar and a murderer from the beginning. So he can't change. That's what Yahweh piped in him. That's what he going to do. That's all that adversary was about, causing confusing, uh, just trying to wreck habit. And he's doing it. He's doing a good job of what Yahweh set him up to do. See, now our job is to learn how to design and avoid being deceived by him. See, and how do we do that? By the wisdom and the knowledge and understanding that Yahweh give us of himself. That's how we avoid being deceived by that adversary. Knowing what he's all about, what what power Yahweh gave him to do, and how to keep from getting caught up in it. See? Now that's our job. That's what we have to do we have to look unto Yahweh to keep us strong in the faith so we won't get caught up in what that adversary is doing down here in the earth plane. See, we see everything going on just like everybody else. And Yahweh, he keep us safe from that, safe from that. You know, it may bother us for a minute when we see certain things, but he don't let us just fall apart and, you know, our mind just like the world. He don't allow us to go into that. So, you see, we got a father we can have some faith in. Just like it stated over there in the scripture lesson. See? Like a lot of them things, before the, uh, those uh, patriots seen them come in the past when Yahweh spake, spake, spoke that to them, they had faith that it would come to pass. See? When Yahweh gave Moses his name, see, Moses didn't question that. He didn't have no doubt. When Yahweh sent him back down there, he went back down and did everything Yahweh told him to do. See, he did it by faith, faith in Yahweh. See, Yahweh proved unto him that he would be what he will to be. See? So you got to have that faith. But when, when he partook, read on now, read on. Uh, fifth verse, fourth verse, and the serpent said unto the woman, no death will you die. For Elohim does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as Elohim, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. 
and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Say, when she gave unto Adam, the eyes of both of them was open. And they knew that they was naked. See, prior to that, they didn't know that they were walking around without any covering on their body. Because they, it wasn't no such thing as seeing flesh and blood at that time. They were one with the creator. See, that's what a carnal mind came about. See, carnal means natural and physical. That's what a carnal mind came about. Over there in Romans, the eighth chapter say, for to be carnal mind is death, but to be spiritually mind is life and peace. See, they were at peace until the transgression of that commandment. See, Eve transgressed. Eve, she uh, partook of it. Adam, he willfully partook of it because he knew that it wasn't no way back for his bride unless he died also. See, when Yahshua came in, see, he died that we might have life. See, that's why he took that body out, that we may have life. See, so... You just got to trust and have faith in Yahweh. And and when I say have faith, I'm not talking about you believe in Yahweh or trusting in Yahweh one minute, then the next minute, you know, you aren't sure about it. No, you got to be totally sure. See, Abraham, he didn't, he didn't play like he believed Yahweh. When Yahweh told him to offer up Isaac, what did he do? He took him out there, offered him up. You say, well, he didn't kill him. Oh, in Abraham's country, that his son was dead. He wasn't wavering on what Yahweh had told him to do. See, so I I, I just want to say to everyone that you just gotta have complete trust and faith in your Creator, and you know. Whenever something come up, you got to ask Yahweh to reveal what's going on with you. If it's something that you need taken off, you, he the one got to do it. Can't no man do it. If it's something that you having problems seeing and understanding, you got to ask Yahweh for the understanding about it. See? So I'm not going to take up a lot of time. <laughs> So, but I just want, just want to say that everyone, you got to have faith and trust in your heavenly father. You know, you can't be playing. This ain't no play thing. This is for real. This is our life. See? And what's more serious than your eternal life? Nothing. So I just want to say thank you. May Yahweh keep and bless all of us. All right, class. Our next speaker was also from Radiant Soul, Ms. Kimberly Collins. Kimberly? Oh, good evening. Um, I'm only going to be a few minutes because I'm actually still at work. I just wanted to listen tonight. But um, I just wanted to say that I enjoyed the previous speaker. And I too am thankful to Yahweh for all that he has done and all that he has shown unto us in these last days and times. And just like the previous speaker was saying that we truly have to have complete faith and trust in Yahweh knowing that um, it's truly his will that's being done. And all things that um, Yahweh has shown us over the years and um, just showing us his, his purpose, his pattern, and his plan, and knowing that all things truly do work together for the good of those that love Yahweh. And we have to have complete faith and trust in Yahweh, knowing that this is his purpose, his pattern, his plan. And um, like I said, um, I'm still at work, so I'm not going to be long, but 
I am thankful to Yahweh for all that he has done. And I just um, reflect now on things that are going on in this world. And I can remember growing up in class and just seeing the things that Yahweh has shown us and told us, they are truly coming to pass. And Yahweh has been telling us for as long as I can remember that he is not a man that he should lie. And um, we, we have to see what's truly going on and how Yahweh, this world is, is over with. And Yahweh is proven to us or has proven to us already and shown us that we have to keep our eyes stayed on him at all times and seeing what he has going on. And like the, um, the previous speaker was just saying, you know, Yahweh has already laid out a profound way. We have to know that everything that is going on is of him. And just like with the children of Israel, the trek that they had to take, we see that we take the same trek psychologically and spiritually. So, and so the things that we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis, we can put ourselves literally on the pattern and see which way we need to go. If you got some moving that needs to be done or whatever it is, and just reflect on the things that Yahweh has already proven to us to show us that it is him working his will unto perfection. And I'm thankful to Yahweh for all that he has done. I'm thankful to Yahweh for coming unto me and showing me um, the way to walk according to him um, and just having faith in everything that, that Yahweh has going on, you know, because even though we encounter different things in our life and it, the good and the necessary, because things that we encounter, they aren't, I would say, so to speak, bad, but they are to get us to keep our eyes stayed on Yahweh to see which way we need to go and to ask him for everything that it is that we see. We have to see Yahweh in it and ask Yahweh which way he would have us to go. And then we have to walk according to the things that Yahweh has shown unto us. And um, and again, I just say that that I'm thankful to Yahweh for all that he has done. I'm thankful to Yahweh for revealing himself unto me. And I just pray daily that Yahweh continue to bless and keep each and every one of the sons and to just show us the way that we are to walk, that it is pleasing in his eyesight. And with those words, I will say thank you and hallelujah. Amen. All right. Our next speaker is also from Meridian Soul, Mr. Roger Collins. Good evening. And I too am thankful to stand before you and have a testimony of Yahweh. And before I get started, I want to just ask that Yahweh remove me out of the way so that, you know, the things that he has prepared for us this evening can come out without any obstacles in, you know, the other's way. And, you know, I can't say enough how thankful I am of this great gospel. And listening to the previous speakers, I was sitting here and I was just looking at the things that had transpired in my life over, you know, the last couple of years and the point that it's got me to and how thankful that I am that Yahweh came to me and gave me this great gospel. And with that being said, like I I, I started seeing the, the difference in the way that I was going. And before things happened to me, even though I grew up in his class and I knew that Yahweh was real and everything he had told us had been true, I couldn't quite get myself out of the way. 
I always tried to interject and do things the way that I thought they ought to be done. And that wasn't the, the right way to do it. Because no matter what happens, as was stated by the previous speaker, the situations that we go through are necessary. I don't look at them as good or bad. They're necessary steps that we have to take to cleanse and purge us of all the, the ignorance that this carnal mind has plagued us with. Because when you when you look at, as the first speaker was was touching on Adam and Eve, how that when they were back there in the garden, they had no concept of good or evil, physical, not physical. They had no concept of that. And so once Eve partook of the transgression, and then Adam partook, they they died in their conscience. And so this thing fell down. And so what Yahweh is doing now is he's cleansing and purging us so that we can be reconciled back until whence we came from, which is him. And so you have to... You have to recognize and understand what is going on. The previous speaker touched on also that we have to discern. Well, what are you looking at? Are you looking at physical bodies and thinking that's what that's what's being talked about? Or are you looking at it for what it really is and the spirits that are operating in these bodies? Because that's what you have to look at. The spirit, whether it's the spirit of righteousness or it's the spirit of unrighteousness. And so in looking at that, and, and I'm only talking about myself. Being laid up like I was, I got to see every vile thought, vile intent, everything that I that I had in me played back before me like a movie. And it made me absolutely sick to my stomach. And so in 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 going through that, like it was necessary for me. I had to learn how to discern in myself, how to take myself out of the way and see myself for truly what I was at that point in time. And I had to be real and I had to be very honest with myself. And I had to, I had to sit there and admit to Yahweh how I was. And that wasn't a good feeling at all. I was shamed. I was embarrassed. I was hurt because after all that Yahweh had did for me, to have to turn around and admit those things about myself, but here's where, here's where the great gift is. In doing so, it freed me. It allowed me to start embracing who I really am, which is Yahweh in a body. It allowed me to have peace and joy and happiness right now in this world with everything that's going on. I can truly say that Yahweh is merciful. He's forgiving. 
But in order for him to be that for you, you got to be honest with yourself. You can't sit there and lie and say you this way when you know you're not. You really have to strip yourself down to nothing. And I will tell you, laid up in that hospital, I felt like I didn't have anything else to live for. I felt as though I was nothing and nobody. And I got tired of that feeling. And I'm telling you, I knew the only one that can come in and give me peace was Yahweh. And so I asked him if it was in his will to release me from that burden that I was going through. And he did. And I have been thankful every moment since then, no matter what I've been through from that point on, I know that he has made a way for me to come out of it for the better. And that's how I look at every situation that I go through now. I embrace every challenge that he takes me through, every obstacle that he places in my way, every trial and tribulation that I have to go through. I'm thankful because that is proven to me what I have in me. I love the journey that I'm on right now. I wouldn't have it any other way because like I said, he freed me from the burdens that I was going through. I used to sit there and fight with myself because I didn't want to tell nobody I was feeling bad. I didn't want to be a burden on my family. But the one that I should have been going through, I didn't go to until I got into a situation to where I didn't know if I was going to live or I was going to die, and I was scared. It doesn't have to be that way. You can call on him now while you're at peace to continue to grant you the strength to get through whatever you go through. And he will do it if you are sincere. That's where we have to be at right now. It's been told to us to stop playing around. But no, we had to keep on going out there, acting a damn fool. Try to use this gospel to get over. But it exposes you. See, you ain't got to want to take a bath on your own. But believe me, you're going to take one. And the type of scrubbing that's going to that's gonna be put on you, you ain't going to want. I can tell you from experience, the cleansing that I had to go through, I don't wish on nobody. I understand why I went through what I went through. Because I had to get to a place to where I didn't, I couldn't look at nothing 
but Yahweh work a work in my day. And I'm thankful. Every moment that goes by, I'm thankful because he didn't have to do it for me. He could have let me pass in the mind state that I was in, which was pure hell. I'm telling you people, you better get right. Because it's getting down to the point to where we don't got long. And I've been hearing that as long as I've been in class, 47 years. But you can see with everything that's going on, not only in this world, but right there within you, that Yahweh is trying to prepare us to go home. So my prayer is, is that you have a sincere desire to love, honor, and obey Yahweh in righteousness and allow him to be the guiding light that leads you back to pure spirit in which we came from. I have truly enjoyed the journey that I've been on and continue to be on because I'm looking forward to what I'm going to fully embrace. And with these words, I thank you and may Yahweh bless us all. Hallelujah. 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 All right, class. Um, I'm not going to be too long. I just want to share something real quick. Um, again, my name is Carla Carter. Um, so, a couple of things. I enjoyed the work of the previous speakers. Um, I just wanted to be clear on some things, too. Um, one thing before I even get into that part, um, what the last speaker was saying, how, you know, we shouldn't be going out there acting a fool. Don't let it be mistaken that you have to physically go somewhere to be considered going out somewhere acting a fool. You could be right at home. And if your mind is minding the things of this world and in your mind, you're doing all the things and having all these thoughts that you know you shouldn't be having. You're going out there asking a the dog on food. Don't let it get mistaken or twisted that, oh, just because I sit at home and I don't go nowhere, I don't do nothing, I don't talk to nobody, I don't mess with nobody, I don't go out to no clubs, I don't do this, I don't do that, that you're okay. Because you don't have to go outside of your home to entertain angels unawares. You don't have to go outside of your home to displease Yahweh. You could be at home and read your Bible every day. You can look at all kinds of different YouTube classes and you could do all these pray every day, two, three times a day and all of that. If your thoughts are still not, even if you don't act on your thoughts, if your thoughts are not purified, you still got some moving to do. So don't let it be, don't let it, don't get that twisted. Another thing I was talking to one of the brethren the other day, um, and we were talking how, and I, I know everybody probably has done it, but I know I have for sure, how, you know, once you start going through something, you may pick up the Bible and read over there in Psalms, make you feel better or something, or read, listen to a couple classes, or pick up the Elohim book, listen to a Dr. Kennedy transcript or, or tape or whatever. And I was sharing with this individual that that's comfort food. Comfort food is okay for a minute. 
but you really have to be eating the prescribed way that we were supposed to be eating. We are supposed to study to show ourselves approved. There's a specific way to go in this Bible and read it in a particular order to get the full picture of what was going on. Because you could pick up the Bible and read in one place and not really know what that's talking about. Or if you don't have a profound knowledge and understanding of exactly what happened in the Law and the Prophet, reading a transcript, listening to a Dr. Kennedy lecture, or any other class, a textbook, or anything like that, it's not going to do you any good because you will not have anything in you so the Holy Spirit can bring to the forefront forefront, so you can understand these things. But anyway, that's a whole other story. Let's go back to Adam and Eve in the garden, though. And we're going to use the migratory pattern also to show the same principles. Um, I may need the front of mind defined transcript, too, but before I even do all that. So this migratory trek, we always say all the time that we take this trek psychologically and spiritually so, right? Now, we know that it all started in Canaan land. This is where Abram was given the promise was in Canaan land that he would be given the seed that Yahweh promised unto him, which was Isaac, and Isaac was born in Canaan land. He would multiply that seed as the sands of the sea and as the stars of heaven, right? And so Isaac was given Jacob and Esau, or he had Jacob and Esau, or Jacob and Esau, and he changed Jacob's name to Israel. And so just like Yahweh said, he multiplied his seed Isaac through Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. They later became the 12 tribes of Israel. And like Yahweh said, know for sure that they have to go into a land that's not theirs, be placed into bondage for a period of time after which Yahweh was going to come in and deliver them out and bring them back to this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. The promised land that Yahweh had promised Abraham before he had any seed, period. So it all started here in Canaan land. This is typical to having a spiritual mind or heaven right now some things transpired where they had no choice but to come down into a land of sin and death down here in Egypt there was they were being they were most worshiping multiple gods it was so much going down going on in Egypt it was a land of sin and death and it's painted dark for a reason depicting ignorance Darkness and ignorance are synonymous, right? Now, Yahweh promised that he was going to bring his seed, Abraham's seed, that he had promised unto him, out of that land after a period of time. And the nation that had them in bondage, Yahweh was going to judge that nation. That's what Yahweh said. Now, Yahweh also told Abram before anything transpired. that Abram would go on in a good old age and would die in a good old age, right? And Abram prayed to see the Messiah's day. Abram saw it and he was glad. That's important too. Hopefully we can get to that and bring that in too. Because we hit all, you know, hit all those different things. Okay. Now, because it's about faith and Abraham and all that is going to tie together. So this is the story that Yahweh had given us and this is the pattern that Yahweh had given us. All these things are going on by a pattern. Remember, everything starts in the Canaan land, the promise and everything. So it was a foregone conclusion that what was going to happen before anything took place. In the 12th chapter of Genesis, when Yahweh started um, doing, making a separation with Abraham, he took Abraham out of Ur of the Chaldees to give him a land that he was going to give to his seed. That's just like him taking on, well, we can do that. All right, so then Yahweh calls a famine in the land. Now, that famine was so great, and Yahweh even showed it a fourth time what was going to happen. That famine was so great, they had a desire for food, but there was no food. The only way they could actually get food and live was to come down into a land of sin and death. Now, when they were down here in bondage, the only way that they even had a possible 
possibility of making it back to the land that Yahweh had promised Abraham was by the blood of the lamb. They had to believe what Moses said about taking out a lamb and putting the blood on the door and eating the lamb. They had to believe what Moses said and they had to actually do what they said that they would do, what Moses told them to do. That was the only hope that they had of leaving out of this land of sin and death to make it back to the promised land that Yahweh had promised unto them. So keep all of that in mind. Let's go back to Adam and Eve in the garden. Now, in the first chapter, I believe it is. Let's go back to the to Genesis. Um, Genesis one twenty six. Genesis one twenty six. And Elohim said, "Let us make man in our image, after our likeness." And let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So Elohim created Paul. man in his. Pause for just a second. So it said, and Elohim said, unto, uh, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Who is this? Us? Are we talking about, talk about that before? I don't want to get sidetracked. And then. He said, man singular, let us make man singular in our image after our likeness, right? And let them, plural. So it was a four conclusion. He's going to multiply this man. Why is that, Yahweh? Because I'm telling my story. This is what, this is my desire. And just like the Messiah over there in Psalms, it talked about all my members were being formed as, if, as yet there were none of them. So all of the children of Yahweh make up the body of Yahshua the Messiah. That's important, too, because we're going to get back to that when we get to the pattern. Let them have dominion over the fish and sea and all that. 27 first. So Elohim created man in his image. In the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he him. Now, so if he is created male and female, and he's being created after the image and likeness of Yahweh Elohim, that means Yahweh Elohim too is both masculine and feminine in types, meaning source and substance. And so this is the man, right? Being formed and fashioned after the likeness and image of El Yahweh Elohim. Male and female, he cre created he him. 28 verse. And Elohim blessed him, and Elohim said unto him, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, mm -hmm. and rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Pause. Now, so this is Yahweh setting up the kingdom on earth, so to speak. So Elohim blessed him. And King James, it says them, and Elohim said unto him, be fruitful and multiply. This was the very first commandment, so to speak, that Yahweh gave to the men. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. The only way he could do that is if he had to have a helpmate suitable in order for him to obey what Yahweh told him about being fruitful and multiplying. Now, on the third, this is the sixth day that he actually made the men. Now, on the third day, that he's showing Moses, because this is all Moses seeing this. The third day, you had the, the trees and things like that with the seed within itself. And the only way an apple tree can be fruitful and multiply or bring forth another apple tree, first, the apple has to fall from the tree. Once it falls, it dies. There's no more life in that apple. Once it falls from the tree, it's going, it's in a downward state at that point. It's, it's going to die. It's in the process of dying now. And that apple cannot be put back on the tree to receive life. The only way that that apple can receive life again, it has to die and be buried and raise another apple tree in order for that to happen. And so for the man to be fruitful and multiply, he has to come together with himself. But the only way that could happen is there has to be a fall, a death, 
and a burial. And there also has to be a resurrection in order for that to happen, right? So that was the commandment Yahweh gave unto him. So then what the first, first speaker read, we're going to read that one more time and be clear. So he told him, uh, be fruitful and multiply, return to earth and subdue it. That means take control of it and have dominion or rule or power over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So he just made Adam king. Adam is the king of the earth. That ties into what the fight between Cain and Abel was about, but we don't have time to get sidetracked off that either. So the second chapter of Genesis, we're going to start Genesis 2 and 12. Um, which will be 2.16 in KJV, I think. 2 and 12, uh, or is it 2.13? 2 and 12, which be 2.15 um, in Genesis. Um, the second chapter, 15th verse, King, King James Version, and then 2 and 12 in the Holy Name. 2 and 12. Genesis 2 and 12, Holy Name. And Yahweh Elohim took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And Yahweh Elohim commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. Paul, but of Paul's Paul's Paul. So if he's telling this to Adam and at this time, Everything that Yahweh brought to the man to name it, he named it. But we know that that was, you know, Yahweh naming him. That was Yahweh walking and talking with Adam daily. On the, that was Yahweh Elohim in Adam as Adam, carrying out his purpose. Now, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. In order for him to tell him that, to eat a physical fruit, he has, he has to already have a natural mind or natural desire. It's a natural thing to want food. That's natural. That doesn't mean he's kind of minded at this time, which we're going to talk about that, but he did have natural desires. Otherwise, Eve would have never been drawn out if she didn't already have carnal natural appetite for the food that they were told that they can and can't eat. So of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. Read. 14th verse. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt die the death. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh Elohim said, it is not good for that the man should be alone. I will make a help suitable for him. Mm -hmm. And and out of the ground, Yahweh Elohim formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them unto the man to see what he would call them. And whatsoever the man called every living creature, that was its name. Now, let me be clear on this part, too. This is Moses' vision. Yahweh's spirit just manifested as these things, but he's showing it to Moses to show that the same substance that he used to make everything what's from the dust of the same thing same substance he used to make the man same substance he used to make the fowls of the air and every, the beast of the field and things like that now Moses is looking at it saying that Adam gave names to all cattle the fowl of the air and things like that now Moses is seeing in the, um, the next word I said 21st verse in the KJV but it is 18th verse in the whole name where Yahweh caused a deep sleep to um, fall upon Adam and he took the rib and closed it up. So after this, he brought the woman out and it said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my, this is what Adam said. It said, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, because some people think that this part, Adam didn't say that. There would be no reason for him to say therefore if it wasn't following the, next, the sentence that, was, that Adam said before that. So this is Adam still talking. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Who was that that said that? It said Adam said it. But Yahshua said over there in Matthew, the 19th chapter, I think it's the third verse. We're going to read it and come right back real quick. 
Matthew 19 Matthew, and 3, when the Pharisees Matthew, tempted him. Go ahead. Matthew 19 and 3. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him and saying unto him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, have ye not read that he which made them from the beginning made them male and female? And said- now who made them from the beginning? Now who made them from the beginning? That was Yahweh Elohim that we just read in Moses' vision that made them from the beginning. And right. this is a comma and say it. So that means that Yahweh said, what did Yahweh say in the fifth verse? For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh. Now, so that's what Yahweh said. Now Moses saw in his vision, Adam saying that. But what that means is that was Yahweh Elohim in Adam saying those things. So he was one with the creator at that time. He was in a spiritual state of consciousness, even though he had a natural desire to eat food. What he did not have a natural desire for were, were, was sexual carnal appetite as far as that goes. Not yet. Because they didn't even have a, they didn't even realize they had a body on at the time. They were both naked and not ashamed. But in order for him to actually be fruitful and multiply, he has to come down in that body. When I say come down in it, I mean consciously come down right. in that body in order to be fruitful and multiply. Same thing with the apple tree. But once he comes down, there is no way possible for him to go back to that state without a, res a death, burial, resurrection. It's impossible. Just like the apple, once it falls from the tree, it is impossible to put that apple back on the tree for it to receive life from its source, except there be a death, burial, resurrection that raises a new apple tree. And so this death necessitated a savior. So when we go back over here to Genesis, the second chapter again, where we were, it said they too shall be one flesh. So once the woman fell, because they are one, then the man has to actually do the same thing because it was not, the world was not brought down through Eve. The world was brought down through Adam partaking of the tree because Adam is the source. Adam is likened to the Messiah, but also that was Yahweh Elohim carrying out his purpose. It's Yahweh the generator, Yahweh the degenerator, and Yahweh the regenerator. And so once the man saw what the woman had done, he likewise took part in the same transgression that she did. Now, the woman was deceived. Adam was not deceived. It wasn't Satan that came to the man or came to Adam and tricked him into protecting of the fruit. He willingly died for his bride because the only way that he could be fruitful and multiply, he, that there had to be a death. He had to fall and there had to be a death. So once he partook of the transgression or sinned against Yahweh because the wages of sin is death, he instantly died in his conscience as well. And now he, is, he has come down into a world of sin and death. Where did Yahweh put the world at? In the man. Ecclesiastes 3 and 9 says he put the world in the man. So he has come down into a world of sin and death, just like Israel. Even though they were promised this, they had to fall or come down into a world of sin and death. And the only way that they even had a possibility of going back to that state that they were in was by the death, burial, resurrection of this lamb back here. Okay, now, so with Adam and Eve, that necessitated the Savior and all mankind from that point forward was born without life. There was no possible way to know anything about the creator or to have any type of spiritual connection with their creator, period, because it was cut off from Adam. Now, as far as a carnal mind is concerned, the word carnal does mean natural and physical. And in different parts of the Bible, it's, it's pertaining to the flesh or physical, natural things. In Romans, the eighth chapter, though, 
where it talks about to be carnally minded is death. Condemnation and death are synonymous. To condemn somebody means to sentence them to death. Condemnation or condemn means death. To be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. So then, let's go to Romans, the eighth chapter. Matter of fact, let's go to Romans 7 chapter first and pick up some of that what Paul is talking about. Now, in Carnal Mind Defined Transfer, um, what Yahweh was explaining through the founder was the definition of carnal mind as far as in the garden, I meaning carnal synonymous with condemnation. And so he talked about when you know, when Yahweh gives you, tells you something, and you know that what you're doing is wrong, and you do it anyway, that's where the condemnation comes in at. But now, if you do something that is a sin or that's wrong, but you just didn't know it was wrong, once you find out that it's wrong and you stop, then that's fine. Yahweh knew that you didn't know. That's why they had a sacrifice for someone who sinned out of ignorance. Now, if you sin out of ignorance, there was a sacrifice for that. But now when you sin presumptuously, where you do it and you know it's wrong, you do it anyway, there was no sacrifice for that over back there in the law. That's why Paul talked about that. There is a sin that's not unto death. I should not wish that you should pray for it. And the sin that's not unto, unto death was ignorance. And so on this side, the man is born ignorant. We're all born ignorant. Ignorance just means lack of knowledge. You have no knowledge of cre creator, no knowledge of anything. You're born ignorant. Now, once you become of age and you start learning the difference between right and wrong, good and evil, then that's where the condemnation comes in at or the carnal mind as far as carnal, and synony carnal, carnal being synonymous to condemnation. Because once they fail, now all of a sudden they wanted to cover up their nakedness. When before, they weren't ashamed of it. Now they want to cover up. And so they sold fig, leaf, fig leaves together to cover up their nakedness. And then after, shortly after that, the man knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bare a son. And knew, when you say knew his wife, that means they, um, they had sex. And she got pregnant and the ad came. And so now they're being fruitful and multiplying like Yahweh told them to in the beginning. And so they had the father to do that. So that's established. Now, over here in Romans, the seventh chapter, Paul is talking about the struggle that he had when he would do good. Things that he wanted to do, he couldn't do it. But the things that he didn't want to do, he found himself doing it. So then he said, then I find in a law, um, a war in his members. Let's get to that part right quick. Let's see. Um, uh, 13th verse. No, before that. Um, okay, 7th verse. 7 and 4. Okay. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of the Messiah that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto Yahweh. Mm -hmm. For when we were in the flesh, the passions Pause. of... Pause for this. So for when we were, past tense, in the flesh. Now he's, top, he's got a physical body on as he's saying this. So he's not talking about when we were in a physical body. He's talking about when we were in the fleshly state of consciousness, when that's all we were minding. When you right. look up the word mind, there's different definitions of the word mind, just like there are different definitions of the word carnal. Mind means, you know, what you're conscious of, your consciousness and things like that. But mind also means obey. You better mind your mama. You, that means you better obey your mama. So when you're obeying the things of the flesh, as far as the desires and the lust thereof, when you're obeying those things, that's being carnally minded. When you're carnally minded or carnally obeying those thoughts and desires, that's death. But now when you're minding the things of the spirit, there's life and peace. And so that's what he's talking So 
when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. What do you mean, which were by the law? And so he's going to talk about that. He was alive without the law once. Because before Yahweh had gave the commandment about uh, of all the trees you can freely eat, don't eat them on the midst. Satan had nothing to oppose. There was nothing that could be considered a sin at that point because there was no law. And so there was nothing to oppose. Now, the law that Israel had was the law that Yahweh had given to them from the top of Mount Sinai in the 19th, 20th chapter of Exodus. And that law was to point up sin and to bring them to the Messiah. That law was for several different reasons. But he's saying, and and Paul was going way after that, which we'll get, let's just get to that part. Go ahead and keep reading so we can get to that part. Six verse. But now we are delivered from the law, being dead to that wherein we were held that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. What mm -hmm. shall we say then? Is the law sin? By no means. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. Pause. Now, so, so then... The law that was given to them, there was nothing wrong with that law. But they had carnal ordinances that were with that law. And nothing physical, there was nothing they could do physically to bring them back to a state of consciousness where they where Adam was before the fall. But those things that were, you know, the physical things that they had to do was to point up the spiritual, the natural to point up the spiritual. Now, I had not known sin. But by the law. So if the law would have said this, I wouldn't even known that it was. I wouldn't have known what lust was if the law didn't say thou shalt not covet. And covet means to want what somebody else has, basically. And so when you want what somebody else has, that's lust. I would not have known lust except the law had said thou shalt not covet. Read. Eighth verse. But sin, taken occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once. Paul, but when, now, how was he alive without the law? When Paul was born, he was born under the law. He was born an Israelite or a Jew. And they, had st they still had to operate under the law that was given back there with Moses and them. They still had to do the same things that were written in them, all those carnal ordinances and all those Think they had to keep all of those things, the Sabbath and the the all that. So when was he alive without the law? He's going way back there with Adam. Before Yahweh gave that commandment of the trees, you know, of all the trees you can eat, but don't touch one in the midst. He was alive in Adam once, but when the commandment came, when the commandment of not to don't touch the one in the middle came. Right. That's when sin revived. That's when sin had something to oppose now. So now sin is being revived. And th then that's when he died. He died way back there in Adam. Read. Sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. Mm -hmm. For sin taken occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? By no means. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. Now, well, we, he fix, so he's fixing to explain why it works death in him. Now, sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good. So, 
if the law wasn't given or if Yahweh had not said, don't do this or don't do that, then that would be nothing for Satan to oppose to cause you to go after the things that you're not supposed to be doing. But because you do it anyway, that's what causes death because the wages of sin is death. That sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. It was already wrong to sleep with somebody else's wife before Yahweh said thou shalt not commit adultery. How do we know that? Because back there with Abraham, when he went to Abimelech and we moved in the land of the Philistines in Gerar and Abimelech took his wife, Sarah, and Yahweh uh, warned him in a dream. He said, you almost made me sin against Yahweh. Abimelech, what are you talking about? How do you know that it's a sin to sleep with this man's wife? And you're a Philistine. You're a Gentile. You're not even a Jew. And the law had not even been given yet. Because the Gentiles, which had not the law, did by nature the things that were in the law. It's in every man. What's right? If your conscience condemns you, Yahweh is greater than your conscience. It's in every man what's right or what's wrong. Now, we can try to play those games we want to, like it talks about in uh, John, the third chapter, how their deeds were evil. They didn't want to come to the light because their deeds were evil anyway. Don't want to come to some type of understanding. Don't want to know what's right or wrong about it. Don't want to come to some type of understanding so your deeds won't be reproved because you want to keep on doing the things that you're doing that you know is wrong anyway. That's why a lot of people now don't even come to class anymore. The seat's too hot for them, but that's, we're not going to do that. So keep reading so we can get to our point. Mm -mm. 14th verse, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. So now that's the carnal that he's talking about. And we know the law is spiritual, but I am carnal. Sold under sin. Now, what carnal is he talking about? We're going to find out which, which definition he's talking about here. Keep reading. For that which I do. I know not why. For what I would, that I do not. For what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Mm -hmm. Now, so then, if I if I if I if I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it's good. So I know that what I'm doing is wrong. I just can't stop myself from doing it. So I consent or I acknowledge that the law is good. Read. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For the will to do good is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find it not. I want to do right. I want to I wanna stop lying. I want to stop cheating. I want to stop manipulating. I want to stop committing adultery. I want to stop doing these things. I know it's wrong. And I feel ashamed of it as soon as I do it. I know in me, I want to do good. The will to do good is present with me. But how to perform it or how to how to stop myself from doing these things, I don't know how to do it. Free. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Now, let's be I clear, too. Now, at the, at the time Paul was saying these things, he wasn't going through that struggle. He's just explaining the struggle. Because remember what we read earlier in the fourth, third or fourth verse, where he said, when we were in the flesh. This is, so he's just explaining what was going on in him before his translation, or before um, Yahshua came to him and converted him, before his conversion, I'll say that, before his conversion. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do, read. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. 
I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of Yahweh after the inward man. But after the inward man, after the inward man, colon, read. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Now, oh, for, for I delight in the law of Yahweh or in the, the things that Yahweh says that I'm supposed to do. I delight in those things. But I see another law in my members or in my mind, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity. So you have a law in your mind and you also have a law that's in your members. And which one are you going to obey? You can't serve two masters. So in the eighth chapter, he's going to talk about that too. The carnal mind is that enmity against Yahweh because it's not subject to the law of Yahweh. You probably need to look up that word too subject so when you're in a kingdom you have subjects that are supposed to subject themselves to the king's rule but the carnal mind is not subject to the law of yahweh it's subject or in bondage to the law of its members minding the things of the flesh that's what it's subject to it's subject to obey those things whether the law rather than the law of yahweh because the carnal mind is at enmity with the law of yahweh but I see another law of my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Read. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to Yahweh. I have deliverance through Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of Yahweh while my flesh is subject to the law of sin. So with my mind, myself, I serve the law of Yahweh, but my flesh is subject, not that my flesh serves the law. So he still has carnal appetites and desires, even though he has the Holy Spirit now. So those things will come up. But he serves the law of Yahweh, so he doesn't obey those things, even though he's subject to having these things come up. It's not like when you get the Holy Spirit, you're not going to be tempted or you're not going to be tempted or tested. That's not what it is. You still be tempted and tested, but it's the Holy Spirit in you that keeps you from doing those things. So he, his flesh is subject to the law of sin and death, but his mind, with his mind, he serves the law of Yahweh. So we're, we're talking, this is, he explained all this about him being carnal. So what does that mean then? The next chapter will explain what carnal means. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua the Messiah. Who oh, walk so that is what, so that's what carnal means in this aspect of what he's explaining. Carnal and condemnation or carnal and condemn mean the same thing in this aspect. So when Adam and Eve received a carnal mind, that means they received condemnation or condemned, depraved mind. They already had a natural mind as far as desiring physical, natural things, as far as food and things like that. But they didn't have a condemned mind. They weren't condemned about anything. And once they were condemned, that's when they started pointing the finger at each other. Well, the woman you gave me, she tricked me. The man, the serpent, he beguiled me. And all the, the no, he didn't say trick me. The woman that you gave me, she brought it to me and I did eat. The serpent, he beguiled me and I did eat. And so they start pointing the finger, blaming it on everybody else except for themselves. And then they begin to hide themselves. That's when they became conscious of their physical, natural body, even though they still had desires to eat physical food. It's not carnal. As far as condemn to eat pancakes or to want, you know, it's not even carnal to desire your wife or your husband because that's, that's what they were given to you for. But what carnal or the condemnation comes in when you desire somebody else's wife or somebody else's husband. It becomes carnal when you start overeating and eating like the gluttonous part. 
when you're doing well, not even on a physical standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint, yes, but from a physical, you can eat whatever you want to. That ain't got nothing to do with your mind. You won't get sick, but it has nothing to do with your mind at all. So the condemnation comes in when you're doing something against what Yahweh said that you are not supposed to do and you know what he said and you do it anyway. That's when the condemnation comes in it. For the law of the spirit of life, read. For the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua the Messiah hath made me free from the law of sin and death. So the okay. law of the spirit of life, not the, not the natural law that Yahweh, the uh, carnal law that Yahweh, carnal ordinances that Yahweh gave to them from Mount Sinai, but the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua the Messiah has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh. Now what the law that he had given from Mount Sinai couldn't do because it was weak through the flesh or through the physical carnal things that they had to do. Yahweh sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to condemn sin in the flesh. Read. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For now, they so that the are... righteousness of the law, sorry, but the righteousness of the law, what's righteous? Abraham believed Yahweh that was accounted unto him for righteousness. So when you're minding the things of the spirit, you're, you're obeying the things that you know you're supposed to do. Then that's walking in the spirit. Keep reading. For they that, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that, so are, they after, that are They that are after the flesh are minding the things of the flesh or obeying the things of the flesh, the natural physical appetite, the sex, the power, the all the physical natural carnal appetite. Because when you start desiring those physical natural things, that takes you away from Yahweh. That is what causes you to start coveting. That's what causes you to commit adultery. That's what causes you to commit fornication. That's what causes you to um, envy and have strife. That's what causes you to lie when you start minding the things of the, or obeying the things of the flesh. And so let me give you an example. So, for example, there's nothing wrong with exercising from a physical standpoint because you're trying to be healthy and things like that. There's no, there's no condemnation in none of that. That's fine. But now the things of the flesh the spirit of this world or the knowledge of this world says my body has to look like this or my hair has to look like that or I want my hair to look like this person's hair. I want, I'm going to work out so I can look like her or I'm going to work out so I can look like him because you're minding those things now and it, it, that's what causes you to covet. We're going to talk about the works of the flesh in just a minute. That's what causes you to start coveting what somebody else has. Or that's what causes you to start being envious and so it's nothing wrong with the actual working out, exercising physically or eating physical food itself, but it's the mind. That's what he, that's what the Messiah talked about. It's not what goes in the body that defiles a man. It's what comes out because what comes out is what comes from his heart. And so they that are after the flesh, those are the ones that mind the things of the flesh. Read. For to be carnally minded is death. But, to be carnally minded, to be carnally minded, not to have a natural mind, but to be carnally minded or to obey the carnal appetite. That is death because that's what's going to cause you to sin. That's what's going to cause you to covet. That's what's going to cause you to lie. That's what's going to cause you to do all the things that are against what Yahweh said that we're not supposed to do. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Read. Because the carnal mind is at enmity against Yahweh, for it is not subject to the law of Yahweh, neither indeed can it be. Now watch this part now, because these words have different meanings. It's like carnal has different meanings, 
So does mine, but also so does flesh. Next verse. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yahweh. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Wait spirit. A Wait a minute. Now they had a physical body on. They had a physical body on. What do you mean they weren't in the flesh? After Pentecost, after the death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and outpouring of the Holy Spirit, all of those that receive the Holy Spirit are back to the same state that Adam was in before the fall. Even though they had a physical body on, you can be in heaven right now while walking around here on earth. That's what the Messiah said. I am no longer in the world, but you are in the world. He was standing right there on earth. What do you mean? He said, I must go to prepare a place for you that where I am right now, you can be there too. He was standing right there with them. They were already right where he was, it would seem like. He was talking about his state of consciousness. He had to go prepare a place for them that where he was consciously, they could also be there consciously too. And so that's the pattern. So just like everything started here in Canaan land, they had to come down and be placed in bondage for a period of time. But guess what? When they got down here, initially, they were not in bondage to Pharaoh yet. So initially, they were in a state of innocence, so to speak. But then if they were down in Egypt long enough, eventually they were going to be in bondage to Pharaoh and his host. And that's like the age of accountability. So then... Once they were in bondage to Pharaoh and his host, like Yahweh said they would be, serving Pharaoh and all of the things that he had them to do, had them in bondage to, that's the same thing we had to go through. Live long enough in this world, eventually you're going to start serving those carnal, natural appetites and the things of this world, following after, lusting after the things of this world, lusting after the sight of your eyes. And it's going to cause you to sin against Yahweh. And so they were in bondage to Pharaoh. The only way that they could come from up under that bondage was by Yahweh had to call one man out, give him a vision, give him Yahweh's name, his brother Aaron as the prophet, Moses as the law, and then the rod, which is likened to Yahshua the Messiah, and come down and show them those signs that Yahweh had given him when he gave him the vision at the burning bush. Those signs were meant for the children of Israel, the elders of Israel. That's what Yahweh said. And they saw those signs and they believed Yahweh. And they were happy that Yahweh had come down to deliver them. But now, when he showed the same signs to Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, I don't know Yahweh, neither will I let them go. And Yahweh told Abraham, the nation that shall keep them in bondage, I, Yahweh, will judge that nation. And it talks about the wrath of Yahweh on those that know not Yahweh and that obey not the truth. And so Pharaoh, he proclaimed, I don't know Yahweh, neither will I let them go. And so Yahweh judged that nation that kept them in bondage, just like he promised Abraham that he would do. And so with Yahweh's name, this vision that Yahweh had given unto Moses, those signs, the law and the prophets, that's what Yahweh used to get to that point where they had to take out a lamb. And so the law and the prophets had to testify to Israel having to take out a lamb and take the blood of that lamb and put it on the top of the doorpost, two sides different from a basin, giving you four points of blood. They had to eat the lamb with the emirates. They had to roast the lamb with the emirates in it. They had to have the uh, unleavened bread. They had the bitter herb. They had to have their shoes on their feet, staff in their hand, because they had to be ready to come out in haste. And so as soon as Yahweh sent that last plague, they came up out of Egypt, and they were led by the cloud. But when they got out here, they had to be fed manna from heaven. But once 
they came to Jordan River and it was time for them to cross over and take that land that Yahweh promised them. The old Israel had to die off. There has to be a new creature to come on over. All of the ones that were born down in Egypt, they had to be killed off out here in the wilderness. And the new Israel, the new creature was the one to come on over. And who was it that was supposed to lead the new creature on over into the promised land? It was Yahshua. Moses couldn't do it. Aaron couldn't do it. It had to be Yahshua. And once they got over here to this land, he didn't have to rain down manna from heaven no more. All they had to do at that point was eat from the land. And that's the same trick that we take, take psychologically and spiritually. So after the fall of Adam, Everybody from that point forward up until the Messiah were born with a condemned state of consciousness. That's why they've had to offer up those sacrifices constantly. Cain and Abel had to offer up sacrifices. Abraham, Noah, all, they had to constantly offer up sacrifices because of the condemnation that was on all mankind up until Adam. I mean, from Adam on all mankind. Now, Joshua did come in to take away the sin singular of the world, which was taken away Adam's transgression. But still, but still though, that does not mean that after Pentecost, you're born with a spiritual mind, because that's not it. It's not until you actually hear the gospel of Yahshua Messiah or the death, burial, resurrection in your heart and mind. Once that is done and you receive the Holy Spirit, that's when you can actually be raised a new creature and re receive the same consciousness as it were before the fall, just like the apple tree. There was a fall. It was not until the seed was dead, buried, and then the resurrection. That's the only way that it can happen. So that's why in Acts 17, 24, go get that for me and I'm going to be done. Ooh, wee, it's nine Acts 17, 24. Let me do this no justice. We have a lot of time. Yahweh, who made the world, and all things therein, seeing that he is rule of heaven and earth, he dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one man all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek him, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. <clears throat> for in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. So we are also his offspring. Now, that's where we come from. That's our destination. That's where we have to go back to. But that cannot happen without the gospel of Yahshua Messiah being preached unto you and you believe it and obey it and receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is what purges your conscience from death-causing works or keeps you from sinning against Yahweh. For in him we live, move, and have our, own, have our being, for we are also his offspring. Next verse, read. For as much then as we are the offspring of Yahweh, we ought not to think that gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device can be like the most high. Pause. Now, so back then, after the fall of Adam, before Yahshua, the death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and outpouring of the Holy Spirit, before all of that, they had a zeal of Yahweh, or they, they worshiped Yahweh with passion and things like that, but it was not according to knowledge. And there was no way that that law had given, that Yahweh gave unto Israel to take away their sins or clean them up consciously. The blood of bulls and goats could not do that, but that was given to them for a time to point up the reality of it. 
That's why Moses, when he came down at the mount, he broke the first table of stones and he had to go up and get the second table. And the second table that he got from Yahweh that had the same law on it was placed in the most holy place in the mercy seat, showing that the first covenant had to be broken. But the spirit of the law of the spirit of life is what governs and guides the man at that point. Those that Yahweh had chosen to give it to from the beginning. So then, on this side of Pentecost, no, we don't have a law like that he gave them, but there is a law that governs you. You know the difference between right and wrong. You still are not supposed to steal. You're still not supposed to commit murder. You're still not supposed to commit adultery. You're still not supposed to fornicate. You're still not supposed to lie. Those things are in you. You already know that anyway. But now when the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah is preached unto you and you find out what thus said Yahweh and you believe it and you confess with your mouth that you know this is the truth and you go the opposite anyway, that is presumptuous then. And there is no more sacrifice for that. So now when the gospel is preached unto you, and I'm not saying that you're not going to have some struggles and you're not going to have some troubles. You still will bump your head after coming to this teaching. But by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. Yahweh has to have mercy on you and you have to have the truth being preached unto you. Now, let me hurry and get this out of the way so we can keep reading where you are. Hmm. 30th verse. And the times of this ignorance, Yahweh winked at. But now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Now, at the because, time of that ignorance, now he knew that they didn't know. Even when Yahshua walked around, he knew that they didn't even know who he was, even though he was healing the sick and raising the dead. Because had they known, they would not have crucified him. So he knew that they were ignorant. At the times of their ignorance, Yahweh winked at that because he knew they didn't know. But now, though, now since the Holy Spirit is poured out, there's no excuse for anybody not to know now. Romans 119 and 20, that which may be known of Yahweh. Is, so we can know something for sure about Yahweh now. And so read the next verse. Because he had appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given proof unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. So he has given proof unto all men that he raised Yahshua the Messiah from the dead. The death, burial, and resurrection. If you believe that Yahweh truly did raise him from the dead, then you will know and truly believe that you and have faith that Yahweh is able to raise you from the dead. Whatever situation you're going through, Yahweh is able to overcome it in you. Out of weakness, they were made strong. So you have to be made weak sometimes in order for Yahweh to come in and be strong in you so you can have some confidence in him. Where do we get off feeling like it's like it's even okay not to call on Yahweh? Well, I just was sitting around. I've just been sitting around. Wait, I'm patiently waiting on Yahweh to do what he said he's going to do. What did he tell you he was going to do? Did you ask him? Did you pray and ask him to help you or do it for you? Or are you just going to sit around and wait and just, just you just going to wait it out? Who tricked you and told you you're not supposed to pray to your father? Joshua even prayed. That's what the seventh chapter of John is about, his prayer. All of his sons prayed unto him. And that's why it says, see, pray without ceasing. You are supposed to pray. Where's all the pride coming from? Well, you don't even, you don't even want to pray no more. I'm just going to tough it out. I'm just going to take it out. I'm going through this for a reason. So I'm just going to wait for y'all to get this off me. That sounds like Pharaoh to me. Because when Moses came to Pharaoh and said, well, when do you want me to tell y'all to take these frogs off you? What did Pharaoh say? Tomorrow. You keep on putting it off. Well, I guess y'all was going to do whatever he want, when he feel like it. I, I'm just waiting for y'all to do it. Well, have you asked him? And then we get so prideful. 
Well, I, I know y'all are going to do it at this set time because that's what I want him to do. I ain't a bit more consort, kind of consulted or nothing. Just We just as pitiful as we want to. Go ahead and read so we can go on. 32nd verse. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. And others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. Okay, that's good. So at the time of this ignorance, y'all, we went that, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent or to change because Yahweh has appointed a day in the which he will judge the entire world in righteousness by that man that he um, ordained and the fact that he had raised him from the dead. He gave proof to all men that he raised him from the dead. Um, Galatians 3rd chapter 1st verse and I will be done. Galatians 3 and 1. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Joshua the Messiah hath been evidently set forth as crucified among you? This only what I learned of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. So did you receive the Holy Spirit? by working that commit that law that Yahweh had given from Mount Sinai? Or did you receive the Holy Spirit by the hearing of faith? And so when we talk about Abraham and, and all the things that he had to go through, how much he had faith and how, you know, Daniel had faith and David had faith and all of these patriarchs that had faith. And then we have our brethren that get up and talk about the faith that they had and Yahweh provided for them and things like that. When we hear those things, it's not just to hear them and just not do anything with them. It's to actually establish your faith in you. From a physical standpoint, I can remember being a little girl and, um, you know, certain things would happen like tornadoes or whatever. If I would be scared, if I looked at my daddy and saw that my daddy wasn't worried, then I wasn't worried. Now, if I saw him panic, then I'm going to panic. Until I got to a certain age where I didn't have to depend on how he felt about something then I was able to stand in it myself because now I know what happens during a storm now. And so when you hear these different stories over and over again, it establishes your faith and it makes you want to try Yahweh for yourself. And when Yahweh delivers you, then you're able to do this. Stuff. Now you can stand on your own faith now. But did you receive the Holy Spirit by the works of the law, by hearing of faith? Read. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you not made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He, therefore, that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the working of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed Yahweh, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Mm -hmm. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And the scripture foreseeing that Yahweh would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. Now, and the scripture foreseeing that Yahweh would justify the Gentiles by faith, because it was all through there. Even in uh, when he showed it to Moses in the vision in Genesis, the ninth chapter where it said he was persuaded Jacob to dwell in the same tent with Shem and Abraham, same thing with Abraham, same thing with all the way through there. The scripture foreseeing that Yahweh would justify us Gentiles by faith. We never had to keep a law in the first place, but seeing that the scripture foreseeing that Yahweh would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. Read. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Mm -hmm. but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of Yahweh, it is evident. 
for the just shall live by faith. So the just shall live by faith. And they were given that law. Well, you're going to tell why they were given that law in the first place. Go ahead. Now, the law is not a faith, but the man that doeth these things shall live by them. The Messiah hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Mm -hmm. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the nations through Yahshua the Messiah, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, the blessings of Abraham might come on the nations through Yahshua the Messiah, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And so we have to have some faith, but how we have faith and confidence is something we know nothing about. So you have to study, you have to learn of your father to even be able to have faith in him. Right. Read. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham, Abraham and his seed where the promises made, he saith not and to seeds plural, but to thy seed singular, which is his Messiah. And that's the seed that he promised unto Abraham that will, he would bless all nations through his seed singular. It wasn't Isaac. Isaac was a type and shadow. The seed that he was promising Abraham that he was going to bless all nations was the Messiah. Right. Because the Messiah came through that lineage. Read. And 17th verse. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of Yahweh in his Messiah, the law which came 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. Mm -hmm. For if the inheritance be by the law, it is no more by promise, but Yahweh gave it to Abraham by promise. Now Yahweh promised that they would receive this land, but he's saying the law that Yahweh spoke down from Mount Sinai was 430 years after he gave the promise to Abraham could not disannul or could not keep them from receiving the promise that Yahweh had given them. Right. Because Yahweh gave it to Abraham by promise, not by doing anything physical and natural. So it was never anything physical and natural that could cause a man to receive life. And why is that? Because truth be told, it was never anything physical and natural that brought the man down. It was right. the disobedience. It wasn't just, it wasn't the physical tree that brought the man down. It was his mm -hmm. disobedience, what happened in his mind that what brought him down. So right. it could be nothing physical to bring him back. And so that was a type and a shadow because it was a type and a shadow when Yahweh said of all the trees you can freely eat, but the one of knowledge of good and evil don't touch that one. Why is that? Because if you know the difference between right and wrong and you do wrong anyway, then that, that's, that's going to cause you to sin. That's going to be death. That's what Paul said. I was alive without the law once. Without the law, sin is dead. But now if you find out right from wrong then now there is now you're going to sin against me if you do wrong anyway but now if you had no knowledge of good and evil and you do it ignorantly there's no there's no condemnation in that because you had no but once you receive knowledge of good and evil and you know the difference between right and wrong now and you're accountable for that and you do it anyway that's condemnation that's death and so that's, that's, that was a type and shadow. Those trees were fruits of the spirit. There were types and shadows of fruits of the spirit. But read. 19th verse. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added so why because... Then, of, so, so, right. So why did they serve the law then? This is explaining why Yahweh gave them this law. Why did he give them that law then from Mount Sinai? This is why. Read. It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Now it, and was, it was added. He, he gave them that law because of the transgression. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. It was added because of Adam's transgression. So they wouldn't be saying, if I was back there, I wouldn't have did the same. I wouldn't have did that what Adam did. Well, you can't even keep this law. 
But it was added because of transgression. So the seed should come to whom the promise was made, read. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Mm-hmm. Now, now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but Yahweh is one. Is the law then against the promises of Yahweh? By no means. For if there had mm-hmm. been a law given, which could have given life, Verily, righteousness should have been by the law. Yep, right. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Yahshua, the Messiah, might be given to them that believe. Given to them that believe, not everybody. Because the promise by faith of Yahshua, the Messiah, and what is Yahshua? The Holy Spirit or the spirit of truth. It's only given to those that believe. Everybody does not have the Holy Spirit. Everybody does not have the truth. This was only given to them that believe. Read. But before faith come, before faith came, we were under the law, shut up until the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Be revealed. Read. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto the Messiah that we might be justified by faith. And that was another reason he gave them law, so it could be a schoolmaster to bring them to the Messiah. Read. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of Yahweh by faith in Yahshua the Messiah. For as many of you as have been baptized in the Messiah have put on the Messiah. Mm-hmm. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For we are all one in Yahshua, the Messiah. Oh, now, for ye are all the children of Yahweh by faith in Yahshua, the Messiah. Now, after the faith is come, ye are no longer under the schoolmaster. So after Yahshua was made known, when Moses pointed him out to the children of Israel, and gave them the double portion at Jordan River to take them on over. Then once they crossed over, there was no more need for them to rain down manna from heaven at all. And after Yahshua actually died on the cross, that veil was written plain. There's no more need for a mediator at that point. That's right. Now you have full access to your father. Mm -hmm. If you got a question, ask him within yourself and expect an answer. Right. Read. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Yahshua the Messiah. And if ye be the Messiah. One, we are all one in Yahshua the Messiah. For, for this call shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. Now, since Yahshua has raised from the dead and poured out the Holy Spirit and we are married unto him, we shall be one. We are all one in Yahshua the Messiah. It's not an arm, a leg, a head. We are all one in Yahshua the Messiah. Not talking about this physical body. Flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom, but spiritually so. We should all be speaking the same thing. Mm -hmm. Read. 29th verse. And if ye be the Messiahs, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. If ye be, if now, if ye be the Messiah, then mm-hmm. are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Mm-hmm. It's not for everybody. It, this is the elect and the elect only. Yahshua said, mm-hmm. all those that you have given me, Father, I've given it to. And what did he give them? He gave them eternal life, which is that they should know that Yahweh is the only true El and mm-hmm. Yahshua the Messiah whom he sent. And we are one with him. Father, make us one, make them one as you and I are one. That was his prayer. And Yahweh made good on that prayer. We are one mm-hmm. with him. You are Yahweh manifested in a body, mm-hmm. not in totality. But you are spirit in a body. Right. And what your consciousness is illuminated, that veil is rent in twain for you too, and your soul and spirit become one with Yahweh. So you can walk around in the flesh 
and be in heaven while you're walking around in a physical body. You can be in heaven while you walk around on earth, just as Yahshua did. That's why he said, let this mind be in you that was in Yahshua Messiah. I hope something's been said tonight, and I thank you, and Yahweh bless us all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. We are over time. Um, are there any questions or comments? That was on YouTube. Let me check YouTube. Any questions or comments from anybody on Zoom? All right. So this is our first class back. I know a lot of us forgot uh, that we were having it or whatever, so we were kind of late, a few minutes late. Um, and I lost track of time doing peanuts homework. But we will have class every Wednesday night, um, again, starting from 7 p.m. Central Time to 9 p.m. Central Time. Um, so we're back to having class two nights a week, Sundays and Wednesdays, same time Sunday and then Wednesday, 7 to 9 p.m. Central Time. Um, we will have the basis of foundation class coming up too, but we'll have to announce that in class on Sunday. If there are no questions or any comments, then we'll go ahead and conclude. Any questions or comments? All right, we'll go ahead and conclude with the doctor. We'll be taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and ever. Let everyone say hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.